Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for praying for me. The throat is getting much, much better, and I can see that I'm heading in the right direction, at least, in being able to speak again <laughs> in legible language. Well, thanks so much for being a part of the devotional series we just finished on the Word Made Flesh, the Gospel of John. Now, I'm going to start a new book on Monday, but I wanted to take these last two days of this week to do something a little different. I'm just going to sit back and look at the heavens. Uh, I've got a wonderful devotional book we used to actually sell in our bookstores called The Heavens, Intimate Moments with Your Majestic God. It's a devotional by Kevin Hartnett. And I've just been reading over some of those this morning, just being reminded of the beauty of God's creation, which the psalm says declares the Lord, okay? The heavens declare the glory of God. And so with that thought in mind, I couldn't help but read something from uh, just the introduction in the Holman Christian Standard Bible to the Gospel of John we just finished, which talks about key words in that gospel. And it says, know and believe were two of the key words that John used. Eternal life is knowing God and Jesus Christ. Further knowledge of God comes from believing and knowing Jesus. Knowing and believing are key terms for John. Both occurred over 90 times in his gospel and are always used as verbs. Jesus' teaching in John reminds us that knowing God and believing in Jesus are always expressed in action. That's why they're verbs. Hey, that's cool. And when you think of that, believing is so, so important, yet many folks just, you know, become uh, stuck on the idea, well, look, if, if something isn't just right in my face, uh, I don't care if it, you know, you say it's truth, I won't believe it. Yet there are many truths that affect our lives every single day that carry this principle. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not, it's the truth. One of those examples is in the devotional by Kevin Hartnett, Sensing the Truth. Sensing the Truth. He starts with Matthew twenty two twenty nine, then he'll end with the Gospel of John. But from Matthew twenty two twenty nine, Jesus answered them, You are wrong because you neither you know neither the scripture nor the power of God. And then listen to the devotional that he gives. Sit perfectly still for a moment. Do you feel dizzy? Do you sense the wind blowing through your hair? No, probably not, but maybe you should. Do you realize that at this very second, you're spinning four times faster than a tornado and moving across the galaxy at more than 200 times the speed of an M16 bullet? <laughs> Remarkable, isn't it? Despite our inability to sense it, the expanse of space is so large and the gravitational force of the sun and the galaxy center so strong that we move at these truly astronomical speeds to satisfy our normal orbital motions. Now here's how the numbers work. Compared to other celestial bodies, Earth is tiny, yet is nearly 25,000 miles in circumference. It takes 24 hours to turn on its axis. That means we're moving at more than 1,000 miles per hour, much faster than the 250 mile per hour tornado. Likewise, the Earth completes its colossal orbit around the sun, some 584 million miles, in just 365 days. But it must move to do that at a speed of around 67,000 miles per hour. And even more astounding, our entire solar system is being flung around the center of our gigantic spiral galaxy at just under 500,000 miles per hour, much faster than M16's bullet. Now there's a life-changing lesson to be learned here. If we cannot readily see amazingly true physical realities, why do we doubt the equally true and even more amazing spiritual realities? We can't feel God, but he exists. We can't sense that he's holding the universe together by the word of his power, as it says in Hebrews 1.3, but he is. We don't see angels or demons, but Jesus spoke plainly of both. We can't even tell our own spiritual state before God unless the Spirit opens the eyes of our understanding to see. Folks, today, let us humble ourselves before God and his truthful word. 
It says he is faithful, loving, and wise. And he is whether our feelings confirm it or not. It says he is our help and our shield. And we can surely trust that he will be today, tomorrow, and forever. It says that he works all things together for the good of those who love him. And we can trust him to do just that. He closes his devotional with this scripture verse from John 3, 12. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? That was Jesus speaking to Nicodemus. Oh, listen, friends, everything in creation declares the glory of God. It declares that those things we've just been reading about Jesus in John's gospel are absolutely true. You have one you can trust in this confusing and troubling world today. His name is Jesus, and he loves you so much that he died on a cross so that you and I might be saved. God bless you. You have a great day in him. We'll do one more special, different devotional tomorrow and start a brand new book of the Bible on Monday right here as we wake up in God's word.